Welcome to the Caregiver Conference. I'm Mary Elaine Petrucci, your host. My guest speaker today is Dr. L.A. Phillips, who will be talking to us about oral health. Before I formally introduce Dr. Phillips, um, I'm going to give you some background about her um, accomplishments in um, oral and dental health. So Dr. Ellie Phillips, mission is to educate the public and healthcare professionals about the science and holistic nature of oral health teaching by teaching practical oral care strategies that are empowering and cost-effective. Her methods focus on how to care for teeth daily to make small changes that create significant oral health impact. Dr. Ellie has over 40 years experience as a practicing dentist. She's worked in oral surgery and private practice in Switzerland, the UK and the United States. Her graduate degrees include advanced general dentistry and pediatric dentistry from the University of Rochester, New York. She has specialized in cosmetic, pediatric, and geriatric dentistry. As a faculty member and clinical director at the Eastman Institute of Oral Health in Rochester, New York, she developed successful preventative oral health programs for adults and children, taught medical and graduate dental students nurses, and other health professionals about oral health. In 2010, Dr. Ellie became a founding member of the American Academy for Oral Systemic Health, AAOSH, an organization which has grown into a world leader in proactive healthcare collaboration. For decades, Dr. Ellie has written magazine articles and blog posts about oral health and she's personally answered thousands of emails and phone calls about oral health from people all over the world. She has published two best-selling books about dental health, Kiss Your Dentist Goodbye, and How Mouth Care Comes Clean. Please welcome Dr. Ellie Phillips to the Caregiver Conference. Welcome. Thank you. I'm just gonna um, announce just a little bit why I'm, for caregivers, why I have Dr. Uh, Phillips here today. I'm a speech language pathologist and I've worked with patients with swallowing difficulty and some of them have had thrush, which is a white coating on their tongue and I needed to do an oral health protocol before I could do any swallowing treatment. So I just, want you to know that there is a reason why we have Dr. Phillips here today. So tell us why oral health is so important. Well, thank you. Great. It, very nice of you to invite me. I'm always thrilled to share what I know about oral health uh, through a very varied career. I mm -hmm. am, as you mentioned, both a pediatric dentist and I worked in geriatric dentistry. So I have seen thrush, actually, as you mentioned it, not only in babies' mouths, mm. but also in the mouths of debilitated seniors, uh, special needs kids, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and putting all this together, I've worked since the very beginning of my career, which was over 50 years ago, uh, in helping people avoid dental problems. Mm -hmm. And I guess most of the things I recommend could be divided into proactive things that you can do. And I love that. That's my absolute mm -hmm. passion is what can you do to prevent problems? Mm -hmm. But I'm also very aware and have experienced the problems themselves. I was a dentist in England. I, I grew up mm -hmm. surrounded by dental caries. People had fillings and extractions, small mm -hmm. children, uh, you know, had terrible teeth, terrible teeth. I mean, there is a, a belief that the British have the worst teeth in the world. And I do believe they have a lot of things that mm. contribute to an increased risk for dental disease. I will, will concede that. Mm -hmm. My feeling is that we always have power 
If you know what to do, there are. Today we have effective strategies. The problem is that these effective strategies haven't always reached the, the state of communication necessary for everyone to hear about them. Mm. I wish that mm -hmm. these protocols I talk about were used in dental schools uh, so that dentists came out knowing these basic, simple things that people could do, but often they're not trained in prevention. Your dentist spends more time, especially now where there are implants and crowns, mm -hmm. there's so much surgical uh, beautification that people mm -hmm. want that mm -hmm. dentists get very drawn into that direction, trying to beautify smiles, whether it's with braces or crowns or, uh, whitening and, uh, and all the different things dentists do to beautify your mouth. Mm -hmm. I focus almost 100% on trying to help people cure problems so that they will never happen again. Sometimes the problems disappear. Mm. Sometimes the problems disappear to some degree. And then you still may need a treatment. But when you get your mouth healthy, which is my goal always, mm -hmm. any treatment that you have done is going to be a permanent fix. It's not going to keep deteriorating. And mm -hmm. even in my own office, I did more of the prevention and had my associate partner do more of the crowns and the bridge work and the, 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 the sort of uh, rehabilitation projects. Okay which interests the most dentists are interested in, I have always been interested in getting people to the point where their mouth is healthy. And why do I do that? Because I've seen the pain. I've seen the mm -hmm. suffering. I've seen the embarrassment. I've seen the never solving the problem, especially for women. And, and I have a divide. I, I believe women's mouth health is different from men. Mm -hmm. And therefore... Women suffer earlier in life, often after pregnancies, uh, hormonal imbalance mm -hmm. contributes to it, stresses, and they're often very caring about their mouth health. They floss and they brush and they do everything they're told. They go regularly for cleanings and they can be devastated mm. because their mouth health doesn't seem to change. It doesn't seem to get better. They often find that the fillings they had done need replacement. Right. That their, their enamel seems to wear away, seem to get sensitivity and their teeth break. And, you know, they can wear night guards. They can, they can do everything they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. But they seem and they feel it, that they're on this downhill escalator of oral health. That's what mm -hmm. I call it. It's a moving staircase in the wrong direction. And my strategies mm -hmm. that I teach are to help people ideally get on the right escalator at the beginning and, and go in the right direction. But most of the people that I work with only come to me because you don't know what you're missing until you've missed it. Right. They, they come That's to true. me because they're in this downward direction mm -hmm. and they feel hopeless. Some people feel completely hopeless. They're actually told they're just waiting to lose their teeth and we can turn them around. If they're prepared to do the strategies that I teach, they are powerful enough to mm -hmm. actually rotate on a dime and start taking you in the opposite direction. You start to go up the downhill escalator and turn your oral health around. Mm -hmm. And I love to do that for various reasons. First of all, when you then have treatment done, sometimes you don't even need treatment. If you have a new cavity, new cavities reverse very easily. Mm -hmm. If you're told for the first time that you have a cavity and you were seen six months ago or a year ago and you didn't have that cavity then, the chances are you, with the right simple solutions, you can actually reverse the cavity. You can put minerals back in wow. to the, the, mm. the, the hole that you would look at on an x-ray. It, it isn't a physical hole usually at that point. It's just a skeleton part of your tooth that is all the minerals are being drawn out mm -hmm. and we can put those minerals back in and and sometimes the hole is too big we can't actually do that or the gum disease is quite serious 
you may need some treatment. Mm. But the really cool thing is that whatever treatment you end up having done is a one-time treatment deal. You have it done and then it's done. And oh. it will remain for the rest of your life. And, and, you know, I'm my own living proof. I have fillings from when I was a child. Mm -hmm. They were replaced in dental school in the 60s. They're still there today. And I have them checked periodically. Mm -hmm. And they're absolutely perfect. And, and, and some of these were mm -hmm. the white fillings, the very, very first white fillings ever done, which are today under the American Dental Association, supposed to last for six years. So there's giving you hope and giving you less treatment, less pain, less suffering, less deterioration. Mm. But the real reason that we need to do this beyond all those factors is that poor oral health impacts your general health. And in today's mm -hmm. COVID world, to be really mm -hmm. relevant, in, from the very beginning of COVID, all I wanted to do was get on television and help people learn how to better take care of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about flossing. I don't teach flossing. I don't even practice flossing. It's not about brushing your teeth. It's not about having cleanings at the dentist. Just to, you know, put this line in the sand. Mm -hmm. My strategies do not go there. They do not address mechanical strategies. My strategies are to improve the oral ecology of your mouth. It's a different mm -hmm. way of thinking mm -hmm. about your mouth. And we'll get into that in a minute. But because your mouth is connected with your nose, think about it. At the back of your throat, mm -hmm. your nose and your mouth actually connect together. And you're a speech therapist. Of course, you know that. And our mouth and our nose is the only place that bacteria, fungi, and viruses can enter our body. I mean, technically, they could get through your eye, but realistically, mm -hmm. it's our nose or our mouth. No. Okay. And our natural healthy state is to have a mucus film. It's a film made of proteins with bacteria woven inside them. This is called biofilm. Mm -hmm. And this is almost like a thin fabric. And in that fabric that is, is, is intensely complex, the, the bacteria colonies are, are of all kinds and the more diversity mm -hmm. there is, the, the stronger this biofilm, the protection that it offers you. But if you have a really good biofilm protection in your nose, your mouth, your pharynx, all the way down your breathing tubes into your lungs, mm -hmm. all the way down your esophagus into mm -hmm. your gastric, into your digestive tract. If all that biofilm connects with itself, it makes perfect sense that the health of our oral biofilm and the health of our nasal biofilm, which is mm -hmm. what I talk about, the two almost are interchangeable. They, they communicate with each other and it's really important that they are both healthy mm -hmm. if we are going to have health elsewhere in our bodies. And that is the com direct communication. If you have a gastric problem, if you have uh, an autoimmune leaky gut problem, look at your mouth health, look at your nasal health from the standpoint of healthy oral biofilm. Okay. And you, when you get your digestive health and your mouth health healthy at the same time, my experience is that the bit in between, mm -hmm. if we get one end and the other end healthy, the bit in between will automatically change dramatically, mm -hmm. dramatically with impact on our immune system, impact on, on other chronic inflammatory conditions, mm -hmm. including things like diabetes arthritis and so forth. So mm -hmm. there is a huge intertwining of, of all of that. Beyond that, if you have disease in your mouth, if you have periodontal disease, we now know very well that periodontal bacteria, and they get lodged, the tooth and the gum open up, Mm -hmm. And the bacteria get in this pocket, so-called pocket between the tooth and the gum. Mm -hmm. And in this confined space, these 
periodontal pathogens produce poisons. And these poisons can dissolve the gum tissue like mm. an ulcer. And they oh. can get into the bloodstream. And through that means they can get into your brain. They can get into your heart. A pregnant woman, they can get into the baby or the amniotic fluid and the, the placenta. And wow. there is direct relationship now mm -hmm. found between these pathogens and certain chronic inflammatory conditions, especially, you know, people who've got artificial joints need to be very aware that these pathogens can cause inflammation in an artificial joint in their body. Mm -hmm. So if you're going in for knee surgery, before your knee surgery, you need to get your gums healthy. And that doesn't mean going to the dentist, in my opinion. It means what you do on a daily basis. That's what I teach. I don't teach going to the dentist for treatment because those treatments, they're a one-time treatment that will help temporarily. Mm -hmm. They don't, uh, they cannot address the underlying disease. And it's an infectious, contagious disease that is the underlying problem. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I, I'm a believer. Um, I think that I knew someone that had, um, I guess, the periodontal disease and they, it caused them to be, not be able to like walk or move very much. They were in so much pain. Um, but when they went to the dentist or to see an oral surgeon, they discovered that he had, you know, pyrrhea. So that was causing all that poison, like you were saying, was causing a lot of um, disease throughout his body. That in the, and um, he needed that to be corrected. Absolutely. And of course, in the old days, teeth were taken out. Right. And in, in an interesting in an interesting way, although I, I mean, having teeth taken out creates a different problem. Um, but in, in another sense, having your teeth taken out does stop periodontal pathogens having this space mm -hmm. in which to breed. These particular gum disease bacteria, I mean, one of the things perhaps we should talk about are the two most common uh, conditions that people come to me with is cavities and gum disease. Okay. And they're both plaque problems. They're problems be that begin because people have plaque in their mouth. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've heard people talk of plaque and most people think you have to floss it away or brush it away. Plaque is a bacterial infection. And what it does is it's, it's a type of bacteria that's able to get inside the mesh I was talking about, this biofilm. Mm -hmm. and it invades this biofilm mesh and it, it is able to layer, they're like little, uh, cylinder shaped bacteria and they're able to line up stick to each other um, almost like little cylinders lining up and they also can stick to each other in the other direction so they can get layered like blankets of these little mm -hmm. cylinders almost like a sort of a crochet blanket on top of another one and they mm -hmm. puff up and when this blanket or duvet of all these little bacteria is thick enough, mm. it is a mass of these seething uh, column-shaped bacteria. That is when you it becomes so large, you can actually see it. And if you've ever scraped white stuff off your teeth, mm -hmm. that is what plaque is. It's an infection of your biofilm. And the biofilm becomes so enlarged that it becomes mm. actually visible. It takes about three weeks of an aggressive attack for it to become visible. Now, if you've got uh, places in your mouth that are hard to see, and if you don't have the right strategies going on, and if you have the wrong things happening, maybe you're a mm. mouth breather or, or you have a weakened immune system, these bacteria, the plaque, can really become aggressive. Mm. And they can form the acids that create cavities. They literally dissolve your teeth away, 
with the acids that they create. Mm -hmm. And this hole that they form by dissolving away the minerals out of your enamel, they crawl into that hole and do the same thing again. They create this acidity that dissolves a bit more of your tooth and then they crawl in deeper and so on. That's how a cavity forms. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that it's a very progressive, slow moving, uh, sort of dissolving and then creeping in and then dissolving. At the same time, if you have this plaque buildup, they produce poisons and the poison mm. causes the gums to swell up and it causes the okay. swollen gum to separate from the tooth. And that separation allows these so-called periodontal pathogens, which are even more aggressive, mm -hmm. to creep in this empty space and cause this periodontal disease, pyorrhea. Uh, it has a lot of periodontitis. It's had lots of names over the years. Mm -hmm. Now, initially, back in the 1970s, when I was a new graduate, we thought that dental disease was caused by bits of food stuck on your teeth. Right. That's one of the reasons people have to brush after eating, which is, is now incredibly 70s. I have to tell you, this is out of date. It's not particles of food. We're not trying to flick particles of food out of our gum crevices. Mm. This is a bacterial transmissible infection. When you, mm. as a grandparent, kiss your grandchildren, that's the scary part. You can transmit this infection to your grandchildren. When wow. you are a caretaker, you are a mother with a baby, you can transfer this infection and it's proven. They've done the, the testing of the kinds of bacteria that transfer. They absolutely know that mothers transfer the bacteria to their babies mm. by kissing them, by interacting with them. And don't think you can just wear a mask. This is not the answer to the problem. The answer to the problem lies in developing a method that will get rid of the bad bacteria but that will promote healthy biofilm mm. because really healthy biofilm. And I love to use the analogy of a garden. Don't go there and blow torch your garden. So there has nothing left. Take out all the weeds and the flowers in your garden. Mm. What's the first thing that's going to grow back? The weeds. Usually the strongest, most aggressive weeds. Mm -hmm. So, Taking out all the flowers and the grass, which is what a lot of people do because they have heard that they need to get rid of plaque. And be very careful because today there are plaque controlling toothpastes. There's plaque controlling mouth rinses. You're not trying to eliminate all the so-called plaque in your mouth because that, those products were developed and they're still marketed that way. But they were developed when we didn't understand the need for healthy biofilm. Mm. We've really only known that there are healthy bacteria in our mouth that defend us since 19, I mean, 2014. 2014, 2015 was when wow. we really understood that the mouth has over a thousand kinds of good bacteria and That's about 14 funny. bad ones, mm -hmm. 14 bad ones. And if you focus on growing the good bacteria, they will defend you from the growth of plaque. They will push away the plaque bacteria. They will reject mm. them. They will protect your mouth from the hot and cold sensitivity. If your yes. mouth has ever been, ooh, that feels cold, mm -hmm. healthy biofilm will protect you from that. And so my goal with my therapies is to develop healthy biofilm. And it's very hard to do if you have an acidic mouth, if you are okay. drinking a lot of acidic drinks, and that could be as simple as squeezing a lemon juice into your water. I know lemon is very good for your health. Mm -hmm. By all means, drink it. Mm -hmm. but drink it at a meal time. And make sure that you don't sip it for hours and hours because that acidity promotes plaque growth. Remember I said those bacteria mm -hmm. were acid producing? They mm -hmm. love acidity. 
anything acidic, whether it's cider vinegar or a soda drink or a juice, mm. anything acidic, these bacteria see as an invitation to grow. So be careful of long periods of acidity. And also they like it when your saliva dries up because they don't get washed away. So they are in their ideal environment for harming you when your mouth is dry. And if you breathe through your mouth, in and out through your mouth, the exhalation of carbon dioxide through your mouth makes your mouth acidic. And of course, mm -hmm. it dries your mouth. It's so really anyone who's a mouth breather is going to have a harder time. And, you know, it's it just look really carefully at what you're drinking, because a lot of water is acidic, especially the sparkling water of today. You know, it's so tempting. Mm -hmm. Carbonated a, water, carbonic acid, incredibly acidic. <laughs> and even tap water can be acidic. And, and so, you know, this is why we have this problem. 98% of seniors have deteriorating oral health, even the healthy ones, 98% of us. That's, and that's amazing. That's it's a horrible like everybody. statistic. It's like everybody. And, mm. and so um, we have to find ways to deal with this. And as far as I'm concerned, there is only one way. And that is to alkalize your mouth. And the easiest way to do this for everybody, in my opinion, I mean, you can do it by checking the pH of your saliva. Mm -hmm. And if your saliva is alkaline, just make sure that you stop eating and drinking to allow your alkaline saliva time to interact with your teeth and your gums. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. That's simple. If you have alkaline saliva, if you, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, it's usually healthy males in their younger years that have plenty of alkaline saliva. Mm -hmm. Women, when they're pregnant for a year, will have acidic saliva. There's nothing they can do about it. Nothing. There's no mm -hmm. diet they can go on. There's nothing they can eat and drink. They may be able to help it slightly by eating more green leafy vegetables, by, by you know really good diet. But overall, most pregnant women are at high risk. That's when you're under, you're you under don't think about those things, no. doctor. So no like, wonder yeah. you get bleeding gums. No, and that's caused by the plaque growth. Mm -hmm. and, and so the great thing is that xylitol, which is what I really have to talk about, is this incredible product. Mm -hmm that does several things. The first thing it does is it stimulates a flow of saliva that comes from the back of the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm. The back of the roof of your mouth, I think they've just found a salivary gland, actually, if you mm -hmm. look up uh, at the most recent, I mean, just like in the last year, uh, some researchers found a new salivary gland that's actually sort of in your name, between your nose and your back of your throat. Wow. Yes. Yeah, well, is that either? Oh my goodness. And I don't think it's even been given a name yet, but there's an odd, quite uh, new salivary gland that's been found at the back of your nose. And I'm wondering if it's from there or whether it's from the cells that I've always believed it's from the cells in the palate they are full of saliva, little tiny cells. They're not the big salivary glands. They're little tiny glands. And they secrete an alkaline saliva. So you can actually generate a flow from these special salivary glands by putting a little bit of xylitol on the dorsum, on the flat part back of your tongue, and just leave it there for a few seconds. You don't have to suck it for a long time. You don't, it's, that whole, whole idea is mm -hmm. an out of date one. Just a few seconds will pull, the xylitol is hygroscopic and it pulls water to itself. And in this case, it's going to pull the saliva out of those salivary glands and bathe your mouth with alkaline saliva. Mm -hmm. which your plaque bacteria absolutely hate. It's the wrong thing for them. 
They do like the sugariness of xylitol because xylitol is delicious. It tastes just like sugar. Mm -hmm. And these poor bacteria actually, you know, if we're going to personify them, they think it's sugar. So they suck it up, they absorb it. And only once they've absorbed it, do they understand or realize <laughs> if they were people, oops, I don't have the mechanism to use that. I only feed on sugar. You see, sugar is a six carbon molecule. It's got six carbons, all this special formation of, mm -hmm. of a molecule of sugar. And, and that's how these bacteria, they, it sort of locks into their, their system like a cog wheel and generates energy for them. But xylitol is really unique in that it's a five carbon sugar. Xylitol comes from plants and it's found a lot in nature. We even have it as part of our human body. It's part of our metabolic process. We generate about 15 grams of xylitol a day in mm. our bodies. So we're very used to it. Um, most xylitol is found from either tree sources. It's in birch trees that grow in cold climates. Um, Native Americans used to just get a piece of wood out of the birch tree and chew on it. Uh, there are children mm. in Russia that they tap the birch trees and get sugar out of it and rinse it around children's mouths. There's mm. China for thousands of years has known about xylitol. And, and so this is nothing new. This has been used for hundreds of years by people who've understood that the birch tree carried xylitol in its wood. Uh, we knew or discovered in World War II that there were other sources for xylitol. And since it could be used in place of sugar mm -hmm. for baking, during World War II, it was table sugar in Europe. It was actually, mm. people used it for cooking and, and baking. And this brings me on to tell one thing that they found it was very, couldn't be used for, was making bread because it was antifungal. Mm. It actually suppressed yeast. It wouldn't let the yeast grow. Okay. And that's why we're going to talk about thrush here in a, in a minute. Uh, xylitol has an incredible use for not only getting rid of plaque because it feeds them and they cannot use it. And so they run out of energy. They don't multiply. They get less sticky and you can get rid of them, wash them off your teeth with a mouth rinse. It's that simple. If you have the right amount of xylitol, which we can talk about later, uh, you can wash plaque off your teeth with a mouth mm. rinse. You don't need to brush it. You don't need to floss it. You can wash it off your teeth. And that's why- That's I amazing. Love, well, it's a much safer way because mm -hmm. if you're flossing, you can damage your gums. You can push the hum. If you've got a gum disease bacteria in that pocket, you could technically push it into your bloodstream. Ooh, you know, as you not floss. Not good. Not good. So washing mm. plaque away is a much easier way to get rid of them. And then the third thing xylitol does is it feeds the good bacteria. It's a pro, it's a prebiotic. It feeds the good bacteria in your mouth. And it's actually really good in your digestive tract as well. For anyone in that field, it, it turns to butyrate. I'm not going to go through all the attributes of butyrate, but if you know anything about butyrate, butyrate forms the original. It helps form the biofilm, the lining mm. of the digestive tract, just like xylitol helps form the lining, the biofilm of your mouth. So it's pretty incredible stuff. Mm -hmm. It is really pretty amazing. So why haven't dentists been using it more frequently in their practice than if it's really this problem with the biofilm and the plaque buildup? Great, great question. Great question. And, and, and it's close to my heart because as a pediatric dentist, I was aware of studies in the 1970s. They gave xylitol to pregnant women Mm -hmm. And they measured their plaque levels. They took these women who had 100% plaque in their mouths. And over these were dentists uh, from the University of Michigan. Uh, and they measured the level of plaque in these women's mouths during their uh, the six, the, the, the six months they measured the levels. They started the program 
three months before the babies were born in the last trimester of pregnancy. Okay. And they ate seven pieces of chewing gum. It was chewing gum with a gram of xylitol in each piece. So they had seven grams of xylitol a day. Now, the chewing gum is just a vehicle to deliver it into your mouth. To the, it doesn't have to be chewing gum, have the same effect with mints. It, you just have to deliver a tiny bit, one gram. Mm. That's one-fifth of a teaspoon. It's a tiny, a tiny amount. Onto the, the roof of your mouth, in their case, they did it seven times a day. Small amount, boom, boom, boom. And then the plaque levels, every month they saw them going progressively down from 100% to 0.2% at the end of six months. You're kidding. No. Wow. Those were that's studies amazing. done in 1970. I am a pediatric dentist. What this means is if you were to give every pregnant mother mm -hmm. a piece of chewing gum five to seven times a day for six months from the last trimester of pregnancy, and it could be all through pregnancy, but in this case, they did it for that, that six months, Baby teeth erupt at about six months old. Mm -hmm. So if you think about this, they have used this therapy in enough time so that when the baby teeth and the child start to erupt, this mm -hmm. newborn infant, the mother is kissing them with a healthy mouth. Oh she my is goodness, going to, right. She is going to transfer healthy bacteria to yeah. this child. Mm. Now, the researchers, were they knew this, obviously, because they followed the children. And every year, year after year, they would follow these children that were in, a, in the, South America. They had no access to xylitol. Once they went away, there was no more xylitol. The mothers mm. only did this during the first year of the baby's life. Once the child celebrated first birthday, that was the end of the xylitol. And yet the researchers went back every year to look at the children who'd mm -hmm. been born to these mothers with healthy mouths. Those children at six years old had 85% less decay with no other therapy, no fluoride, nothing. That's amazing. I'm um, because, you know, fluoride was such a big but it is a concern, big um, you know. The trouble it, is, you, you hit the nail on the head, say fluoride it, it, to the American Dental Association is the way they want to go. They do not want, they do not want to hear about this. They won't fund studies on this. I have tried to do studies year after year when I was faculty at the University of Rochester. I tried to do this, to reenact the study because this study was not done in America. So it was discounted. Oh, if it's not done in America, we don't want to know about it. Right. But if they and won't so fund you to do it. They wouldn't it. fund them in America. And, and so these studies mm. that showed this generated a public health protocol in Finland. And in Finland, this has been the protocol. In Finland, they adjust the biofilm where possible of mothers before babies are born. Mm -hmm. in this way you can wipe granular xylitol on the erupting teeth if you miss the boat and you're a mom with with terrible cavities and the history of gum disease and you don't want to use my protocol to get rid of it or you feel you can't right now or you don't have access at mm. least wipe your baby's teeth with a little bit of xylitol five times a day directly on the teeth just a tiny bit, one gram, a, fifth of it, a teaspoon for the whole day. And if you buy a one pound bag of granular xylitol, there are 663 teaspoons in it, I think, from what I recall. So that would be enough for 600 days. That's two years. Your child's going to be through what they need. And it's $10 for a one pound bag of granular xylitol. So please don't tell me it's too expensive. I, I'm not going to go there with you because, but I, so just because the studies weren't done here in the United States, they were discounted, but then the American Dental Association wouldn't fund you to do it. 
to do the same study here in the States. No, and and that was years ago. I, I mm. changed and left my job and began writing books. Uh, I, I went into practice by myself and began writing books because mm. of that. I had an issue with that. And I met somebody recently who's a biofilm researcher. And I was mm. excited because maybe he would do this now. Maybe we could do it by looking at the biofilm and, and it, use xylitol and do this study, reenact the study focused on bio. And he said they will not fund it. They still won't fund it. There's no funding for xylitol because the American dental institution isn't in that direction. It doesn't want to go in that direction. And I'm saying no more about it than that. I just have the experience of helping people eliminate dental expenses, mm -hmm. see huge changes, help my grandchildren. And they don't know what they do without xylitol because you can, first of all, use it as babies. If a child, a baby mm -hmm. has thrush, wipe the xylitol over that child's mouth and the thrush, the candida will disappear within two days. It's that simple. You don't need harsh medications or anything. And then a, a preschool child, a special needs child who's not uh, able to eat, maybe one who's, who's being uh, fed with a tube, mm -hmm. wipe that child's mouth every day, three or four times a day with some xylitol, and you'll keep that mouth so healthy, which is very hard it's, to do. Well, it is hard to do. And I mean, I just cleaning an adult's mouth for a swallowing problem I, I was just, just using water. I mean, there was no. You see, and and the problem product to use. No, and it, and many times when a patient's debilitated and, and in hospital, mm -hmm. they'll wipe the teeth with uh, two things that I absolutely hate: glycerin, because glycerin interferes with biofilm formation, and lemon juice. Yes, the lemon swabs. Oh my gosh, I was doing the wrong thing. So okay. lemon and glycerin would be, it could not be worse. I don't know who came up with that, but there is no study in the world that I'm aware of to show that glycerin and lemon juice do anything but harm and create more problems. And the same thing goes for the most of the dry mouth products in the marketplace. If you buy a product well advertised, and I can't say names here, but often they're advertised for dry mouth uh, help with dry mouth. Mm -hmm. You get some get a pH meter from Amazon. They're they're about twenty five dollars, and and they're little battery operated pH meter. And you can just dip this pH meter into that mouth rinse, and you will be shocked. You will find the pH of most dry mouth mouth rinses is acidic, four point two, three point two. It couldn't be worse. And there are a group of dentists who have tried really hard to get at these big, famous, loud companies that are leading people down the wrong roads, but, but our voices are not heard. Mm. I, have to, I have to be more grassroots than that because they overpower us with these big advertisements and the money that they spend. Oftentimes they'll support uh, I worked with the Scleroderma Association because, of course, when you have this autoimmune problem, you have dry eyes and a dry mouth and dental problems. And most of them, the, the, the sponsoring company of the Scleroderma Association mm -hmm. has a mouth rinse that I would beg you, do not use. And that's mm -hmm. really confusing for people who have scleroderma because... They're wanting help, they're wanting relief. And the relief, the number one product for relief, I would say is xylitol for everybody with dry mouth, with uh, any problem. They make a xylitol nasal spray. If you have a dry nose that might be contributing or you have allergies, mm -hmm. uh, use a xylitol nasal spray. And, and don't stick it right up your nose, just mist the end of your nose and then just sniff it up and you'll find it's very comfortable. Just sort of moisten your nose with a xylitol nasal spray and you'll achieve the same effect in your nose. It'll kind of begin to run. You might have to blow your nose. Great. You will then have this wonderful clean feeling uh, 
that that is your biofilm feeling moist and healthy and ready to defend you, to defend you from virus, from bacteria, from problems. That is totally amazing to me. I think we were using um, those lemon swabs just to stimulate um, the salivary glands it, to get so that um, the person wouldn't have a dry mouth and it would help I assumed at the time, you know, like the thrush or the white coating on the tongue. So you're telling me now, okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's not your fault. It's just so annoying. It's it's so hard mm. to get this message through. And and for me, I haven't had the opportunity to make the products. You know, I went to Procter and Gamble. I've been to the big companies. Why don't they make the product like this? They do. They have it in Korea. They have it in, in other countries. Um, one thing there is, is a, a spit. It's called Spiffies, S-P-I-F-F-I-E-S. -F -F -E it's a, a, a tooth wipe. Mm. And that would be what I, you know, if you ask me today, what should you use? You know, if you don't want to make your own, you don't feel you have the time. They're about 25 cents a piece. Uh, which makes them a little more expensive than making your own, but they are xylitol saturated gauze square that you can then wipe over uh, teeth or mouth mm. or so on. But there were studies done. Um, one of the problems with thrush, and you specifically asked me about thrush, if you're wearing dentures, you have a dry mouth and you have dentures, thrush mm -hmm. Just populates underneath those dentures and it can also cause what's called angular chelitis or chylitis it's a, a soreness at the corners of the mouth you don't have to be old and you don't have to have dentures for it sometimes special needs kids get it because their lips get very dry and their, mm -hmm. their corners of their mouth will crack wipe xylitol wipe xylitol just keep wiping xylitol over those lesions. And, and if mm. you can, glycerin isn't good really when it comes to teeth, but you could mix uh, some glycerin if, or if that's what you're finding you're putting on, at least mix it with some xylitol or put the xylitol underneath and then the glycerin if that helps for, for your moisture moistening the mouth and the, the corners of the lips but underneath the denture what it, they've done studies in 2018 they did some studies using a xylitol baby toothpaste and that has no glycerin in it it's just xylitol in a gel mm -hmm. and that would be probably even better if you could put your hands on a baby xylitol toothpaste it is something I'm hoping to make myself. That's one of the products I think has huge use. I wouldn't call it a baby toothpaste because I think it's for anyone with a dry mouth mm -hmm. because you can swallow it and it doesn't matter. It's just mm -hmm. xylitol in a mm -hmm. gel. It, it's, you know, you, it's not enough for tooth brushing if you have cavities and you're trying to reverse a cavity or anything like that, but it's beautiful for this preventive thing that you can put under a denture. Uh, mm. or inside a night guard or, um, you know, round braces or something. If you have a dry mouth and you just want some xylitol there to last a little bit longer. Can you find that baby it's xylitol? Coming. It's in, coming. I, it it changes every year. And I say, I'm hoping to have it available. And then when I do, I can email you and you could email people so, so they could find out where to. Um, yeah. get in touch with me, Dr. Ellie, Elliot, Dr. Ellie, um, I will, I'm writing a new book for next year. So um, I hope I'll be able to put some of these things in that. Um, you've done a lot here. So let's um, talk about some treatment options, which I have been using, Dr. Ellie, and I think they're wonderful. Um, it does take a little bit more time, but um, I really like the results. So would you like to share that with everyone? Well, I think everybody's on board. I can't think of anybody who would ever not want to use xylitol unless they've been told things that are untrue. I mean, there were myths about xylitol because nobody knew the name. When I started writing my first book, it was when they were before computers. I was on a word processor at that mm. point. 
And uh, it took me 12 years to write the book because I had young children and, and teenagers. and I had a lot of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, so finally I had a computer and you remember those old computer you had the yes. little box would pop up and tell you, you know, if you had a misspelling. I had this little pop-up box that every time I wrote the word xylitol would ask, do you mean Tylenol? I mean, it oh, wasn't no. in the database. And oh my gosh. And that's how out of date we were in America. And mm. in 2004, I think it was 2004, it may have been mm-hmm. 2006, I'm sorry, I, I, I lose, lose the years. There was a, a symposium in Bethesda. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they were looking at how to prevent dental cavity, dental disease. Mm. What is the best preventive method? And they looked at all the studies. This was the beginning of evidence-based research. Mm-hmm. And they found that there were no research studies to show flossing had any benefit over brushing. They had very minimal studies to show that brushing did anything much except reduce gingivitis, which is the first stage of gum disease. It's okay. before the pockets open. If you have bleeding gums for the first day you've ever seen bleeding gums, brush them more because this form of brushing will get rid of that plaque, which is your problem, Mm -hmm. get it away from those gums, brush, 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 make your gums bleed, it doesn't matter, you've got to get all that plaque away, start on a xylitol program, xylitol mints five times a day, um, after meals is ideal, Mm -hmm. and brush, 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 so that you get rid of this plaque before it opens up the gums and then you get a periodontal problem which is much more serious and much harder to get rid of. Mm -hmm. So if you're at the early stages, really xylitol is is a huge help to you and a decent toothbrush Mm -hmm. because most toothbrushes today are very, very soft. Everybody's using feather soft toothbrushes. And that is because everybody today is artificially whitening their teeth. And it may shock you to know that artificial whitening products strip your mouth of biofilm. They do this so that the peroxide can get into your tooth and artificially whiten the proteins in your tooth. So peroxide mm. itself will damage biofilm, but the way they construct whitening products is that they sort of boost that peroxide. So not only do they strip the biofilm off your teeth, but then they allow this peroxide to go in and restructure the proteins of your teeth so oh, your nice. teeth will look whiter. If you're using a Crest white strip, be aware that it is, it is as acidic as battery acid. And that is why you will erode the enamel completely off your teeth. If you're using a toothpaste, a smoker's toothpaste to whiten your teeth, it's probably got grit in it, pumice, that will abrade your teeth to get rid of staining and so-called whiten them. Everything about artificial whitening is upside down. Everything. And of course, by stripping your mouth of biofilm, as we said at the beginning, Mm-hmm. You're now going to make your mouth sensitive to hot and cold, temperature changes. Every time you eat certain things, it's going to hurt. And your enamel is going to wear away because you're losing the protection that is offered by biofilm to stop your enamel wearing away, to stop these little delicate enamel crystals from flaking off your teeth at night. Mm-hmm. So, first of all, stop using damaging products. That's the first thing. I would always recommend the original Crest toothpaste. Crest cavity protection toothpaste. You can buy three tubes, I think, for $5 at Walmart. You just have to bend down because they're always on the bottom right or left-hand corner. They're Mm -hmm. in in an awkward position because they, they really don't want to sell them. They're the cheapest toothpaste pretty much on the shelf. Mm. Do not buy new and improved. Do not buy sensitive toothpaste because sensitive toothpaste simply puts products into those holes that this Mm. acidity opened up in your teeth. 
in order to get this peroxide in, they opened up holes in your teeth. And then hmm. that's why the, your teeth can be so sensitive after the whitening. And, and of course, sensitive toothpaste simply block up these holes. Mm -hmm. They don't help. They will fall out and you'll keep needing sensitive toothpaste for the rest of your life. And the problem is that they also block up your salivary gland, the little ducts. And that will give you a dry mouth if you're not careful. So there's all sorts of problems with sensitivity toothpaste. Don't buy into that. I would always, always, always recommend the simplest toothpaste that has no glycerin. Mm -hmm. It's made with a product called silica. And silica is uh, a, a the, basically the calcium and the phosphate that, that comes into your teeth and reestablishes your teeth, it will mm -hmm. rebuild your teeth. And you should be able to read on that box that it stops cavities before they could start or heals cavities before they start. And that's because it's made with the same ingredients as tooth, teeth itself. So those are the basic things. Find a toothbrush that's not too soft, medium, feels good. I recommend certain toothbrushes. Use a really good toothpaste like the original Crest. It's the cheapest one out there. It'll last you. You don't need a lot. Mm -hmm. Brush if you see your gums bleeding. Brush really, really well. And then the rest of my program, beyond xylitol and beyond those things, I think people can come to me and learn more. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a video boot camp uh, because it's really about using the product that will get rid of those periodontal pathogens. Mm -hmm. It's about using a product that can heal cavities. And I think there's a little more to learn. So maybe uh, read the books, listen to podcasts, uh, come to my website. But, but the basics are not difficult. Anybody can use them and you could start pretty much at any time. That's amazing. Um, I've been using your protocol the last several weeks and I have to say um, it's really made a difference. I can really feel like that biofilm in my mouth and I, it just feels much fresher and cleaner, um, much better than just brushing alone. So yeah. thank you so much for that. Um, do you have I, any parting thoughts uh, um, for the audience today? I think if you have an, and you know, have personal experience of, um, of, of, of you know, treating special needs kids, mm -hmm. having a mom with final year in, in assisted living and, and, you know, that difficult living condition and the caretakers in those situations are sometimes not you, there are other people who may mm -hmm. be transmitting from their own mouths disease, and that's a problem, be very confident that xylitol, once you get going, is protective. It can be very protective. Mm. So you don't have to be paranoid. Once you've got healthy biofilm, mm. it's mm -hmm. your own or sort of interior mask. I mean, I, I think of it with COVID now. Right. I, I do wear a mask in a lot of circumstances, but I also do my complete mouth care system and my nasal spray before I go into a high risk environment because I feel like that's my double layer. It's my mm. own natural protection. And when my mother was in assisted living, it was all she could do to remember. I mean, she loved the Zellies, the Xylitol mints that she would consume all day long and hand to her friends. Uh, and that was great. You can't overdo it. You, you know, you really can enjoy mm -hmm. them quite freely. It's not medicine. It's, it's it's something that you can have a lot. It's also in Europe, they, they have very high doses to prevent osteoporosis. So there, mm. there are other more than I tell you about. I'm a dentist. I talk about oral health. But in the evening, I would go in and do what I could with the complete mouth care system most of her entire life, uh, adult life, from the minute she started at 45 years old till the day, pretty much towards the end, the last week of her life, we did the complete system mm. together. I would go into assisted living every night to do her teeth before bed because it was during the night she would sleep and snore with her mouth open. Uh, she was in this environment with other people who had bad oral health. Mm. And we were able to protect her all the way through. Mm. So it is very protective. I would keep her toothbrush away from that environment because I would put it somewhere safe uh, away because it was very close to a toilet. 
Mm. Think about things like that. I would take in clean toothbrushes, basically. I took them in to brush your teeth. And last thing at night is the most important time for anybody, child, teenager. It, it, I couldn't brush my mother's teeth twice a day. Maybe she did what she could in the morning. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think about it and even worry about it. It was more important that we did it before bed at night. Mm -hmm. That is the most important time. Not after meals. Forget all that. That's back to the old days of flicking food away. Mm. Just rinse your mouth and maybe eat, eat something that is refreshing in your mouth or rinse your mouth out. Mm -hmm. Brush them if you, if you really want to. But for somebody that you're caretaking and it's a challenge, before bed at night, it is worth the time to do whatever you can mm. to go to bed with clean teeth. I really appreciate you saying that because... Um, this is a totally new way, I think, for people to really look at their oral health. So it's going to take them some time to get used to the protocol, but I, I really highly recommend it. And with somebody who's a challenge, you know, you get to a point that with certain children, especially these children, very challenging. Mm -hmm. If you can get the ACT fluoride, I recommend the ACT fluoride, mm -hmm. onto a toothbrush or onto a a cloth or a finger cover and just get it around the teeth. Minimal, minimal, if nothing else, because if your child has a lot of plaque, the plaque will soak up. Remember I said it was like a blanket. It mm -hmm. soaks up the act and that act will act will actually be an act blanket around the vulnerable teeth during the night. Mm. Now the teeth. Okay. What it will do is will protect the teeth from turning into a cavity. It won't necessarily remineralize them, but you'll hold it in a holding pattern. Mm -hmm. It's enough to stop those wicked bacteria from damaging the teeth during the night. So if you can simply, I had a mother yesterday, her child will not brush. She's got sensory issues, mm -hmm. doesn't like toothpaste. He will eat the zellies, which is superb. And he also will brush. So brush with a drop of act. He will not rinse, but brush with the act, and that would be hugely helpful. Or rinse. I mean, either one, whichever. Sometimes they will only rinse, sometimes they will only brush. But, yeah. Oh, my gosh. You have given us so much to think about. <laughs> I know that you have an offer for our audience as well, Dr. Ellie. I do. I, I, I believe there's a code. Mm -hmm. um, I think you, I do not have it, but I hope you do. Do you? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Please, please share that because I made, because I have so much not information to share and the knowledge was all up here mm. and, and I wrote it in books, but not everybody has time for books. So I made it into little five minute videos, 14 mm -hmm. of them right now. We're going to make another one about childcare and another one about uh, caretakers care. Uh, mm -hmm. These things, I hope by uh, at the end of this year, and we are giving access to the adult program with a mm -hmm. discount. And I really encourage everybody to at least go and explore because you can find out, even if you don't want to sign up and we're giving you a discount, but you can view three of those. If you look carefully, three of those videos can be previewed at no charge mm -hmm. because we want everyone to see them. It's how to brush teeth. It's how to use these products. Mm -hmm how to use xylitol and we didn't want anyone to feel that they couldn't afford it so those three if you look carefully you can click on them and you can access them at no charge and don't feel bad i want you to but okay. if you want to learn more about testing about how to talk to your dentist about all these things we have given you as much of a generous discount as we feel we can can do mm -hmm. um, at this moment and we will be adding more things and more uh, communication to the people who sign up. So I hope it's helpful to everybody. Oh, I'm sure it, they noticed such a big difference, Dr. Ellie. I, I can um, speak somewhat for them if they do try this program because it does work. Um, I want to thank you so much for this incredible discussion on oral health. Um, I know some people were probably wondering why I had a dentist on. Um, however, it's really important what you have to share. And I can tell you're so passionate about it. And thank you so much for 
those offers. I really do appreciate it. And I think our audience will notice a difference in their oral health if they just follow your program. I hope so too. And you, you'll you give them the discount codes, right? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh, thank you.